what I do is I model the interaction between an interrogator and a detainee. And so lots of social situations can be, can be analyzed using game theory. Um, there are particular problems applying it to torture, and I can talk about some of those later. People often say you know, rationality isn't applicable, but, um, uh, but I think I can demonstrate that it is. Um, but the basic idea is you, you, have a, you have players, you have people who are interacting, they have preferences, uh, they have certain knowledge about what's happening um, and certain preferences for what the outcomes are, and you see how they interact given those preferences. So the best way to illustrate this is maybe with an analogy. So if you live as I do in New Jersey and forced to drive to work, then you know what a morning commute is like. And inevitably that means lanes uh, merge, so you go from three lanes down to two. And everybody knows that everybody's best off when everybody just takes their turn and they alternate and everybody gets home on time from work or to work on time. Inevitably though, somebody cuts in. And then somebody sees, I'm gonna get stuck behind, I don't wanna be beaten, so I'm gonna cut in, and I'm gonna cut it. And pretty soon it devolves and everybody is on each other's bumper and they're honking and making nasty faces at each other. And so that's a stable outcome in game theory called an equilibrium. So, so nobody has an incentive to do anything else, do anything differently, given what everybody else is doing. If everybody else played nice, I'd rather play nice, but if everybody else is cutting off, you know, I don't want to sit there and, and be stuck in traffic. So I do the same sort of thing with interrogators and detainees. So I look at different kinds of interrogators, just like there might be different kinds of drivers. I look at interrogators, some of whom would stop torturing if the detainee gives information, some of whom are sadistic. Uh, 